What's up everyone, Zach Slife here, and today we're going to see if the Digitech drop tune pedal can compete with the Fractal Audio Axe FX3 for pitch shifting. So what exactly is the point of today's video? Well, it's pretty straightforward. I have two units that can change the tuning of my guitar without me having to physically retune, and they are the Fractal Audio Axe FX3 and also the Digitech Drop Tune pedal. The Digitech Drop Tune is a standalone stomp box unit that has a algorithm inside of the pedal that allows me to detune my guitar a set number of half steps. So I can go from a standard guitar tuning down to E flat, D standard, D flat, C, so on and so forth, up to an octave below. And the Fractal Audio Axe FX3 has a pitch block inside of the unit as well that allows me to go up or down one to two full octaves, depending on how far I want to go. So today we're going to put these in a head-to-head -head comparison where the only variable is what the unit pitch shifting is present in the signal everything else is going to be exactly the same so let's get started with a rig rundown and see how we're going to conduct today's test so today's signal chain is the guitar running through the fractal audio axe fx3 into the main input in the rear and i have the digitech drop pedal hooked up in the effects loop of the unit and i'll show you how that's all routed so just to show you guys what's going on in the routing of the unit today I have the looper block first so that we can take a nice clean clear guitar signal and use that. And then I have a mixer block here which is going to allow me to just take the audio from the Axe FX pitch block or take the audio just from the Digitech pedal which is in the effects loop. So by hitting one control switch here you can see on the mixer that right now I'm just taking row 3 which is the Digitech. If I press that again. Now I'm just getting signal from row two, which is the Fractal's built-in pitch shifting. So let's see if we can find any similarities or differences between the two. So let's take a look at the clean guitar loop that I have going right now. This is what you guys just saw me play. It's here in the looper, and as you can see here in the mixer, we're only taking the audio from row number two, which is going to be the fractal pitch block. So let's see what it sounds like when the pitch block is bypassed, and just hear the loop by itself. All right, now we're going to enable the pitch block and you should hear it kick in just a little bit and I'll show you what I mean. All right. All right, so now we're going to down tune the guitar by a half step and listen to the loop again. Alright, so right off the bat you can hear some warbling and some artifacts being introduced. The default settings for this virtual capo have the tracking at five. For those of you who don't know, the tracking is how fast and accurate the algorithm can pick up the pitch of the guitar. So the closer to zero you are, the faster it'll pick it up, but the more artificial and janky and laggy the sound is going to be. But the closer to 10, the longer the delay and latency that you have, but the cleaner and clearer the pitch is going to be. 
10 is impossible to use live or tracking because it is so delayed. So let's set it to two, which is a trick we used to do with the Axe FX2 and the AX8 and see if that kind of helps stabilize the sound a little. All right, it's still not great. So let's change the pitch tracking to off which means that it'll just process the signal straight through without any additional processing, just affecting the pitch itself. Now, so far to me, that's the most clear and concise it's been. We're going to do this again, going down a couple more semitones, two, three, four, and then we're gonna switch over to the Digitech and we'll go from there. You can hear it's almost adding like a chorus modulation. All right, so as you get lower, you'll have to adjust the tracking so that it can catch the sound as well as it did for the slightly higher tunings at a faster tracking. So that's the fractal pitch block. Let's switch over to the Digitech. So turn that off. I'm going to click on the mixer. And as you can see now on the screen, we're only taking audio from row three, which is the Digitech. Again, we're going to play the clean guitar loop so you can hear it without any effect processing. nice and clear, let's turn on the Digitech. So that's a pretty clean, warm sounding pitch shift. Let's try it with two semitones down. You can hear just a little bit of warbling. All right, we're gonna go down three. All right, so so far overall, the Digitech is clearly doing a cleaner, clearer job of recreating these pitch shifting effects that we're trying to do, right? We're trying to drop the tuning of our guitar without actually manually tuning the instrument itself. So while the Fractal has more options in the unit itself, right? We take a look at this pitch block, right? The virtual capo is what we're supposed to be using to change the pitch of the guitar, but we also have versions of the whammy pedal that brings the entire pitch of the guitar down or up anywhere from a semitone to two full octaves. It also has different sorts of modulation effects that copy your signal and detune it up or down to create a chorusing type effect. We have 
all the different versions of this uh, delays we have echoes and an, arpe an arpeggiator yeah. we haven't had we even have an arpeggiator like you'd find on 80 synthesizers and keyboards but the virtual capo itself right the pitch shifting algorithm itself i still think needs a little bit of work to compare to how reliable and consistent the digitech drop tune is <laughs> So let's take a look at the distorted guitar loop that we just played. I'm going to pull up Fractal and again, bypassing everything that's going on, we will listen to the loop one more time. <laughs> So let's kick on the fractal first. We'll turn it back to zero and you guys will hear it kick in. Set it back to two because that's what I did for the clean loop. And we'll listen to it in its entirety. So under a heavily distorted tone, it's really not that noticeable that there is a pitch shift going on. Let's go to minus two. We'll listen to it again, and then I'll do the same for number three. down one more because this riff is originally played in C standard so we'll go down to four we'll bump up the track into three and we'll just see how realistic it sounds <laughs> Let's shift over to the Digitech and we'll see how that sounds. So again, over at my mixer, click and get on. Now we're taking audio just from the effects loop. Again, we'll start with the clean loop.
that just about wraps up today's video. I gotta say, I'm very impressed that the Digitech drop holds up as well as it does despite being one of the oldest pitch shifting algorithms and units out on the market today. As far as I'm aware, it's the exact same processing and algorithm that was used in the original Digitech Whammy drop tune pedal, which came out in the mid 2000s. If I'm not mistaken, I'll post the actual year right here, making it older than any of the latest Fractal products, the Line 6 Helix products, probably the Kemper and the Quad Cortex, as well as the neural DSP pitch shifting algorithm that is in the new Archetype John Petrucci plugin, which I have not yet tried. So again, leave your thoughts and comments and opinions down below. I read and respond to every single one. Let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know what you're using for pitch shifting or if you even bother with any of this stuff and just bring it down to a guitar like I personally do live. If I'm playing an E flat, my guitar is going to be tuned to E flat. If I need another tuning, I'll bring another guitar in that tuning. It just responds, feels, and sounds more natural to me personally. As always, be sure to hit that subscribe button. You all know the drill by now. You help me out. I can help you out. It's a great relationship that I love to keep with all of you. Until next time, everyone, keep on practicing and stay safe.